Critics review of Epic Proportions of Transformers Generations Deluxe Size Tankor. Just think about that for a moment. A figure that's supposed to be coming off of a CGI model that towers over Optimus Primal and Beast Machines that helms the spark of Rhinox is a freaking deluxe size figure. I digress. I can't say any more about that considering that back during Beast Machines there really wasn't such a thing as deluxe Voyager or leader size figures. There were just numbers. Levels 1 through 4. So I can't really complain about the scale that much, considering that Tankor's figure in the past never really did have a scale. If I had to grade the scale of the original Tankor figure, which I do not have, this is the universe repaint, I've got to say that this is still in the deluxe size scale. So I really can't say much, but... You know, I can understand why Hasbro every now and then likes to go back and remember some of the great Transformers and give them a more accurate, more today articulated style in, you know, deluxe, Voyager, or leader size figures. Which is okay with me, but when you have a figure based off of a CGI model of a character that is the, one of the tallest characters in Beast Machines. you are got to be kidding me. As a matter of fact, you're playing dumb over there. You know, Hasbro, I've said enough. Just to let you know, if any representative is actually watching this video, my offer still stands. I'm willing to help you. Contact me anytime. Just contact me. I'll show you how you can really step up your game. Anyway, back to the figure. So this is Tankor. When we finally got the son of a bitch for both tank mode and robot mode, this is what we saw on the show. This is what we get right here. I love it for that. I can't complain about anything else minus the scale. I, I really do love this figure. It's awesome. It's really cool. It's not the scale I want, but he's something. And just because, like everybody else does in their review, let's take a look at his box real quickly. His package is pretty tall. It's not all going to go on camera. Pretty much at the top, you got Transformers Generations. Comic book included. Down here at the bottom, you got Hasbro's logo. You got Tankor. He's also known as a Viacon. Yeah. Thrilling 30th Transformers. Don't know why I just changed accent. Anyway, Crosscut, Rat Trap are also available. I've got Rat Trap. I have no intentions of getting Crosscut. Switching on the back. Not hitting my camera. You can see there's a little bit of a bio for Tankor. I'll let you read that. Then there's Tankor in his robot mode, mistransformed, might I add. And then there's his tank mode, which we're already looking at. And here's his stats. He's pretty powerful for such a small little dude. And that's pretty much it. Get that out of here. Contents included with this figure is a set of instructions. We don't have to get into it. And a comic book, which is pretty much a continuation of the Dark Cybertron story. So, unlike Rat Trap, Tankor is actually in this, if I am not mistaken. If not, I'll look through it a little later and correct myself in another video. Why not? So, there's that. And Tankor himself. Awesome. <laughs> Need I say anything less? Awesome. He's great. <laughs> He's actually got working wheels. That's nice. Very nice touch. All Transformer toys that have wheels should be working. Uh, nitpick. 
one of the wheels doesn't actually hit the ground, unfortunately. So three wheels are rolling, one sticking in the air. What are you going to do, right? It's a mistransformation somewhere in between the toy, or maybe it's the engineering side of things, but it's never going to actually hit the ground no matter what I do. Sure, I could pop his head off like that and then break the transformation a little bit to get it to sit flush on the ground, but it just, as you can see, it just doesn't work. This wheel right here is never going to touch the ground. I don't know. I, I'm not an engineer. I don't know anything about it. Oh, well. It is what it is. Detailing on this figure is absolutely astounding. I, I love the job on this. I really do. Paint job could be a little better. As you can see, some areas they didn't even try. Some areas they really tried to get in there and give you what you could. Or what they could. I love the faction logo. Very nice. Head sculpt pretty cool if you didn't know yes that's his head of course uh some bleeding in the yellow up here but other than that it's still great i really do like this i really do for such a small figure it's a nice piece to hold in your hands it just feels great really great like they didn't cut corners or anything minus scale but i'm tired of talking about scale Anyway, he's got a flicking missile, or not flicking, but it's uh, one of those, uh, what do you call them? Ah, uh, friction missiles. Close enough. So what you do is you push back on this little piece of his cannon, and if you just pray to God, hope it works, it actually works. That's two times now that this has actually worked on camera. Of course, you didn't see the first time, but that was when I first tried to record this son of a bitch. So... Well, you know, it actually works. It's not as powerful as a spring-launching projectile, but I guess there has to be that, you know, safety control. Unfortunately, all toy companies are doing this nowadays. Goodbye, springs. Hello, flicking missiles. So there's that. Enough about the complaining. Tank mode is great, nonetheless. So let's go ahead and get him into his robot mode. What's that? You want a size comparison? Why not? There's your size comparison. There he is with his counterpart from the universe release, Obsidian. You know, Tankor and Obsidian. The two-pack. Uh, pretty close to a scale of a tank and a helicopter, I guess. I'm not certain, but I guess this would work for a Cybertronian tank and a Cybertronian helicopter. So there's that. Now, let's get him into his robot mode. It's pretty simplistic. You know, every Transformer toy nowadays pretty much is. Get that out of the way. Pop this up. Rotate this. Rotate this. Bring down his feet if you can. That's right, back here. You gotta hold this. Bring this up. Then you can bring his feet down. Because if you don't, they just catch on this and you can't transform him. So there's that. There's how his legs are actually transformed, Hasbro. How come they never get the transformation right on the back of the packages? Flip this out. Rotate the wrist. Aha, yeah, wrist rotation. That's something that's disappearing nowadays as well. Last but not least, fold this down. Hope to God that you get all this aligned accordingly, because if you don't, you'll find out why later on. See? You found out. It just doesn't work. You have to tap. Make sure everything is aligned properly, because if one thing is out of place, he's not going to attach properly. So there we go. Now that that's out of the way, flip up the cannon. Get everything adjusted to my liking, and there we go. Tankor in his robot mode. And I gotta say, it doesn't look like much has changed in the term of scale from vehicle to robot. It's pretty much the same scale from tank mode if you were to uh, stand it up straight. Oh boy. I like the figure. I like the details. I like the paint job. It could be better. Don't get me wrong, it could be better. I love the articulation. The articulation on this figure is superb. And uh, this is actually a ball joint for those that didn't know. I'll show you real quickly. You pop his head off and you can see it. It's a ball joint. But just because of the way the head is designed to make it look very much show accurate, 
there's just no free movement for the head to go up or down and very little of a turn. I guess that's because of the uh, the neck pieces right here. They just block the head. Oh well. Uh, let's see. Ball jointed elbows. They go in and out. Did I just say that? Ball jointed shoulders. They go in and out. Double jointed elbows. Very nice. Uh, bicep swivel. As you can see. Wrist rotation. A lot of Transformer toys nowadays are lacking that. Finger articulation. Of course, these are claws, though. Or pinchers. Whatever. Legs go up. They go back pretty far. In and out. Thigh rotation. You've got less than a 90 degree bend at the knee. Unless, of course, you cheat. Fold this piece down like so. And there you go. Now you can get a little more than a 90 degrees. See? And last but not least, the feet pivot up and down due to transformation. As a matter of fact, most of the articulation is due to transformation. So, overall, the figure is nice. Even if scale is pretty much lacking. And yes, he does have a little bit of a stability issue. Even with these back heels, they just... They don't seem to work. They're also on wheels. So yeah, you could wheel him if you wanted to. And I think he did that in the show as well, if I'm not mistaken. Do you know how long it's been since I've actually watched Beast Machines? Do I dare cross that path anyway? Uh, the figure sports light piping. But it's not much. Because Hasbro still can't make their decision whether or not to give figures light piping. But as you can see, this piece right here is not actually transparent. I mean, you can't see through it. It's actually a frosted plastic, so unfortunately, not much light's going to work. It's not going to shine coming from the eyes. Not much light is going to shine through the eyes, unfortunately. But, nonetheless, the figure is pretty great for what it is. It could be better, but it's a hell of an improvement compared to its last time. Which is right here. So yeah, there you go. Look at this. The present meets the past. I gotta say, Hasbro really did step up their game when trying to get this figure to look accurate because this is atrocious. What the hell is this? This isn't even tank gore. Yes, sure, the package said tank gore. But the paint job's not tank gore. It wasn't tank or for Beast Machines, unfortunately. Uh, I believe there was a release that was called Beast Wars Returns or something. I can't remember. This was the, um, a Takara release that re-released this figure in his actual Beast Machines color. Am I not mistaken about that? But anyway, I don't know. The point is, Hasbro must have been... On drugs or something in the past because this looked nothing like its actual show counterpart as a matter of fact none of the Beast Machines figures look anything like their show counterparts so what am I complaining about this is a nice touch it's a nice step up but really the it's just that damn scale that really bugs the hell out of me because look at this for a figure that is in terms of a deluxe size this is bigger than this one and this one just came out not that long ago, but you get the idea. Shouldn't he be the bigger one? I mean, you learn with the times, right? You get better over time. I gotta say, there's some improvements, and then again, there's just some things that you, you scratch your head wondering, why? Why didn't you do this? Oh well, it is what it is. There's no doubt about that. It's a nice improvement, but it just could have been a little better. I mean, I'm not kidding when I say this guy is a freaking midget. For other size comparisons, let's bring in Armada Starscream. Armada Starscream towers a little bit over Tankor, unfortunately. And if that's not enough, let's bring in one I just bought the other day. Here's Rat Trap. He's about even in scale with them going from head to head. But you get the idea, Tankor isn't supposed to be small. Tankor is supposed to be big. 
I really, I can't say anything else because I just keep talking about the damn scale no matter how hard I try. This is probably as best as it's going to get. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to redo this review. This is the one I'm going to upload, so now you know. Anyway, uh, is he worth the purchase? I don't know. I mean, there's so much that could have been done to make him better. Scale, obviously. But, uh... Yeah, sure, why not? I mean, if you got the money, like $15, sure, I, I don't see the reason why you shouldn't pick him up. I mean, he is pretty cool for what he is. He's not perfect. I mean, they really shouldn't have called this tank or They should have called him these uh, drones. I forget what the name of those were. Anyway, that's it. You wanted my opinion. There's my opinion. I've got nothing else to say. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you know what to do. Just leave them down below. And um, if you haven't already, please like, share this video with everybody else that you may possibly know that's looking for a review on this figure that just seems to get out there somewhere. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel for more Red X reviews of Epic Proportions. Until then, I'll see you next time. Yes, it stands out pretty far because it's actually a button. If you press this button... You get some laser sounds. There's also another button back here.